What is up heroes, this is Minute Zero, and welcome back to Let's Play Banjo-Kazooie. In the last episode, we finished up Rusty Bucket Bay, admittedly one of the more difficult levels for me in particular. And in this episode, we're gonna, well, I believe there was a Jiggy that we needed to get before we move on to the final level. So let's go ahead and do that. And there was also a note door that we needed to unlock. So let's go ahead and, and see if we can find that. I believe both of them were over here. And we'll see what they lead to. I think this is where that Jiggy was, right? Yep, perfect. All right, so let's go ahead and grab that. So that's the ninth of the Jiggies from the overworld. Oh, I should actually... Well, I can just jump over here. It's fine. Here's that note door. We can see what's through here. Only requires 640, but of course we have 800 of them. So I think we're good on that, guys. Wow, this is a... <laughs> this is a rather intense hallway. I should have read, again, what Grunty was saying. My bad, guys. Okay, so we made it through. Where are we, though? You'll notice this tree-like structure, it actually may even ring a bell. Because we've been one place earlier that had a similar setup. We can probably get on top of that. But, oh, is this something over here? It is. Ah, another secret cauldron. Wow. So that's the shortcut from there, okay. I actually used these shortcuts for like the first time trying to get all the way back here. This is of course the area of the game that I'm least familiar with. I don't think as a kid I actually ever fully beat this level. I think it was only when I came back as, uh, as an adult feeling like I wanted to play Banjo again, maybe a few years ago, that I had actually completed this entirely. Now there's another note door here, we'll obviously come back to this one later, it says 765. We obviously can complete that door right now. Is there... What's over this way? I'm so curious. Oh! A mumbo token! Lovely. Where are we? Can we, can we turn around? I don't want to walk off for the sake of falling. For, for the fear of falling, but... I wonder, is there something up there? I don't know. Oh, so there's the water switch. And then this is... Gotcha. Okay, well, we have to go through this again, unfortunately. But it's not the end of the world, I guess. We've got plenty of health. We'll eventually get it back, I think. I hope. <laughs> we can probably get some of it from this guy here. Although he looks like quite the baddie. You can tell from his color scheme, right? What? Come on. Alright, well, I was thinking we were going to get some health back. Turns out we lost more than we actually stood to gain, so that didn't turn out as planned. But just goes to show the enemies are getting a little bit tougher. Rather, just bulkier. It's not like that enemy was exceptionally difficult, just had more hit points that I managed to screw up. <laughs> Alright, let's see what's on this side. So, we could grab that if we wanted. I don't think I'm going to. What is this? Ah, so earlier in the game we found the, that portrait for Click Clock Wood, but there wasn't a, I guess, a panel where we could actually put our jiggies. So we'll need to go back and find that. But in the meantime, we've also found Gruntilda. Gruesome Gruntilda's favorite pastime is bursting boils, okay? This poor guy called Undead Ed was her first and only boyfriend. When... When she was younger, Grunty used to have a mad vulture as a pet. Ooh, you poor dears. Your energy is low. Let me fill it up for you. Oh, that's better. I didn't realize Bruntilda did that. Well, thanks, Bruntilda. Much appreciated. And so, presumably, this will be where we enter. Long of tooth and strong of arm, Grunty's got the lasting charm. I don't know about that. If your charm were so lasting... Well, why are you trying to steal all that charm from duty? Huh? Huh? So this is where we're going to enter Click Clock Wood. We'll have to come back after, though. We've got... Well, actually, I should be able to take the shortcut, right? Yes. That is a game changer, because I was just thinking about how far back that original Click Clock Wood portrait was, right? That was something very early in the game. So I'm happy that we'll be able to do this. 
Also, oh, darn it. Come on. I was in the stun lock. <laughs> I like stood up and immediately started trying to move and couldn't. But nevertheless, I think we have 35 mumbo tokens. That seems like a pretty even number, right? That feels like a good number, meaning um, we've probably found all of the mumbo tokens that can be found. Or if we're missing some, we're missing a lot of them, like five of them probably. But anyways, let's see what we've got going on over here. We can finally unlock Click Clock Wood. We're not going to spend too much time in Gruntilda's Lair trying to get back to our level either, which is nice. I love the aesthetic of this area. And 35, look at this thing. It's literally only got one piece in it so far. So we're filling the entire thing essentially. All right, Click Clock Wood. So there we have it, the final world in this game, which is probably not surprising given there are two more secret honeycombs to get another piece. We have 800 notes, 900 would be nice and even. We have, I think like 89 jiggies right now, so getting to 100 again is another convenient number. So yeah, makes sense. I think one of the things that's really nice about Banjo is that it is a somewhat contained experience. Meaning that it's not like, it doesn't have tons and tons of worlds, it doesn't have a ridiculous number of things to do. I'm looking at you, Donkey Kong 64. <laughs> it has nine worlds that are, and of course Gruntilda's Lair, which are big and open and allow for exploration, yet dense and not too expansive that you feel quite bored by the time you're finishing them up. Right? Each of these is really a 45 minute maybe an hour long excursion, right? So here we are in a sort of hub area. Click Clock Woods, why I said this might actually lend itself to a couple episodes. One, it's the level I'm least familiar with, but secondly, it has different seasons. So I actually really appreciate that the color coding of the different grass and the items you can actually collect at that area. But so there's spring, summer, fall and winter. I think I think we can start with spring. I don't actually know. Again, this is an area that I'm less comfortable with, so it will definitely require some experimentation on my end. We can start with spring and, and we'll work from here. We're already starting to pick up... Actually, oh, I'm gonna probably have to see which one is already open. Are any of them already open? Or is there a switch I can hit for one of them somewhere that I'm just not seeing? Ah, here we go. So we do start with spring, but the switch for the spring door is over here in front of fall. <laughs> makes sense, makes sense. So we'll head on over there and see what we can do. I know that this area is more of a vertical level, which I admittedly feel pretty conflicted about. But the music here is so good. So they just get super active, I think, when you get really close. I don't know if there's like a more reasonable way to get that, but that's how I remember doing it before. So that's what we did now. <laughs> Little Robin Hood-like figure there. Hmm. Looks like we can do some platforming there if we really wanted to. We've got plenty of water over here. Is there some swimming we want to do? Hopefully we don't run into snackers. Got an extra life up there. Platform we can work with. And we've got this friend here who's having a tough time. Somebody move this boulder. Naughty can't get in his house. Aw. Well, I'm sorry to hear that, friend. Let's keep on exploring over this way. And see what we can find. We've got ourselves another mumbo token. I can't help myself. I, I must get the mumbo token. So we've got only one more invincibility feather. That's because the, the camera changed there, so I ended up wasting some time, but not the end of the world. We'll get some notes over here. We have a fence to protect ourselves. It'll be interesting, this is the spring, right? So what'll, what'll happen when this grows? Can we, I feel like for some reason I'm getting the idea, yeah. How many do we need? I was like, for some reason I'm getting the idea we like plant a seed here per se <laughs> by putting eggs in there. 
And I'm glad that hunch was correct. Again, I'm not really familiar with this level. Oh, I thought it was still playing the cutscene because it was showing the plant, but it was just hiding me. That's really funny. So eventually this will probably be something that blooms into, well, something useful. That bull is having a tough time over there. This tall grass is going to make things pretty easy to hide. So we'll need to keep an extra eye out. Uh-oh, we just got an odd number of notes. Oops. Need to be careful. <laughs> it just, like, fell through the floor. That was pretty funny. So we can continue climbing. Oh, wait a minute, wait a minute. I immediately regret that decision. <laughs> My Bramble Field makes you yelp. And loss of life, it sure does help. Yeah, no kidding. We'll need those boots if we want to do anything important in this area. So in the meantime, I would like to go back over here so that we can go on this ramp and pick up those notes. As you might expect, given that there are four seasons, all of which are connected, it can be pretty difficult to backtrack and find notes. So we're going to want to be extra careful about that. And we also could use some eggs. As you saw, we are rather low. We can run past these guys, just barely it seems, with our Talon Trot. We should probably start taking them out so that it's not a hazard when I'm trying to go back up eventually. This is where we started the level. Oh, that actually hit me. Okay. That confirms that it's not going to be as easy to avoid them as I had initially thought. Really? Can I not land on this? Okay, good. Um, <clears throat> Can I not land on this? One more try. Um, one more try that we at least make it to the second leaf. <laughs> Come on. Got a lot to accomplish, Banjo. Can't afford to be falling off the, the leaves like that. Okay, never mind. We're just gonna go over here. <laughs> I guess my platforming skills are not on, on par enough. I'm sure that those will bloom into leaves or something like that later on. Oh, I should, I should take this guy out. We could use the health for sure. It seemed like they were doing quite a bit of damage. That could just be me and my bias coming through, though. One of the things I remember, actually, now that I'm doing it, disliking about this level, is that you constantly have to, if you want to use the Talon Trot, you constantly have to come out of the Talon Trot in order to attack those things. So what's going on up here? Anything up higher? No? Okay. Well, then you're not worth it. Use our one last Golden Feather to get one more Golden Feather? I don't think so. Alright, so this is where we had pretty much left off last time. So what we can do is basically, we'll check this out. This is Mumbo. We're not going to want to transform yet though, are we? Probably not. Let's explore a bit more first. Was that something down there? Yes, a Mumbo token. I'll have to keep that in the back of my mind. And now we'll continue upwards. As I was saying about vertical level design, Personally, I'm not a huge fan, mostly due to the fact that falling can be so incredibly frustrating in terms of the progress you lose, in addition to the damage you maintain. I'd imagine these will also similarly bloom into something useful, but we've obtained a Mumbo token, which is lovely. We can come over here, it's not too crazy to get this extra life, and given that this may be a longer episode because of the nature of this level, that extra life could actually play a role. But yeah, I was thinking about it mostly after I recently played through Majora's Mask for the first time completely, 100%. And that's something actually that I'm considering bringing to the channel because I really enjoyed it overall. But one of the dungeons, the one where you're a Goron, was a little bit rough, to say the least. And namely in that um, it was vertically oriented and was really difficult. So I think we can transform into a bee as Mumbo, or from Mumbo, and then can get in here easily. I bet we can actually get in here right now. Hmm. Is it worth trying, though, is the question. Absolutely. And I changed my mind. It was not worth trying. <laughs> but we successfully recovered from that situation, so great. But yeah, I just remember the frustration of having to re-platform the same segments over and over. Which, well, I mean, I, I play Mega Man games, I play a lot of platformers and stuff, I get it. But the pace of a lot of these 3D platformers or action RPG type games like Zelda, 
aren't really built around the fast-paced platforming that is conducive to redoing segments over and over in a game like Super Meat Boy or Celeste, which I both, you know, really, really enjoyed. And, short plug, I have Let's Plays of them blind on the channel, so if you want to check that out. So we got ourselves another Mumbo token. There's a launch pad down here. Is there anything else we can reasonably work with up here? No. So, if that's the case, we will head down. Luckily, there's no... there aren't any bees here. The camera is going to be real mean to me here. Okay. Let's do this. Can I switch around? <laughs> camera. We're, we're making do, guys. We're making do. So I can see that launch pad there. Hmm. That's probably just another way to get up here, right? Via those leaves. Otherwise, I don't think I'm really missing out on much. One thing that is nice about vertical platforming levels is that as you progress, you get more perspective on every other aspect of the stage, which is really nice just in terms of potentially finding collectibles, finding areas you didn't explore, etc., or shortcuts and, and the like. So we're, we're, we're climbing. I think we can go in the window in addition to the front door. Got a squirrel here. Chomp, chew. Nabnut likes acorns. I'll just eat a few more. So I think acorns are going to be a collectible we need to find for our friend Nabnut here. He's pretty cute. Predecessor to Conquer, maybe? What is he, like a, like a red-tailed squirrel, I think, or something like that? Anything up here? Nope. Okay. Alright, well, we'll be back, Nabnuts. Hopefully we'll be able to grab some acorns for you. And now, we can head over this way, do some platforming. Unfortunately, wasting red feathers, but, you know, it's the least of our problems right now. So we've got this guy going on over here. Big egg. Big egg. <laughs> and a big nest. We'll pick up some blue eggs of our own, so that we can use them to... Well, actually, no, we've already planted that one seed, but either way, we're incredibly low on eggs, so we'll take what we can get. And I think we can probably launch ourselves on top of the egg. This reminds me of that one that we could... Yep, and sure enough, there's an X on top. War! Me, Airy, Mighty Eagle! Need sleep now! Okay. Enjoy your enjoy your nap, Harry the Eagle. You're very cute. The Z's, they remind me of uh, Mario Kart. Mario Kart 64, that is. You know how, like, when you start drifting, the... I think, is it, like, E's or something? Come out of the, the cart to let you know the degree of drift boost you're going to get when you let go. So this is a little bit tough in terms of the platform because you have to do the flutter. Ooh, man. And so what I like to do is start to turn towards... Nope, that's the wrong button. Is turn towards the tree as I start to land with my flutter. So that I kind of... I have the wall to work with. Alright, we're gonna... No, and I didn't... Oh, man. <laughs> I didn't grab the Jinjo. Can I go in here? I can. Alright, well... We'll go in here and we'll see if we find any golden feathers. Hopefully we do. If not, then um, then we may just have to try to make it work. Can I do something there? No. There's a Jiggy. Hey, that's a pleasant surprise. <laughs> we get that for climbing all the way to the top. We can get ourselves an extra life here. So we've got a couple extra lives now. And is there anything else we can do while we're up here? Can I climb this? No? Yes? Oh, yes. But I cannot see for the life of me. So, it looks like it'll be a rather difficult task. And climb up here, climb onto here. Okay, camera change. Climb over here, camera change. Lovely. Alright, so I got an extra life. Let's see, is there anything else up here? Any golden feathers? No? Oh, man. Alright, we're gonna have to... Let's see if we can make this work. So what I'm gonna want to do is if I take damage, I'm not gonna want to fall off the tree, right? So I think what I'm gonna try and do is kind of fall into it from above. So that was incredibly successful. 
as you can see. At least we left a lot of the honeycombs here. I think if we transform into a bee, we may be able to get closer to these flowers without, or these plants at least, without triggering anything. So, so maybe that's the move right now, is to head on down and transform into a bee. And hopefully that does something. <laughs> at the very least, let's give it a go. I can't think of too much better at the moment. So we've got our boots. Before I forget, I'm gonna go pick up this Mumbo token. I've never looked at how many Mumbo tokens there actually are in the game, and so if you were to collect all of them, how much, how many would you have after completing the game? I don't know. Hopefully we find out though, right? So how many do we need? We need 25 Mumbo tokens. We'll transform, although realistically I, I should've. Aw, look at little bee banjo. <laughs> Mumbo magic, much good. B is best yet. So the, the cool thing is you can fly pretty easily, I say, as I'm struggling to fly. But look at that design. I love it. It's so funny. So we'll pick up a few of the eggs there. Is there something back here? Did I hear a Jinjo? Or am I just hearing Jinjos? <laughs> I'm just gonna hear Jinjos in my sleep. Alright, so we can do some flying, which is nice. Is there anything on top of Mumbo's hut? No? Okay. So we'll go on over here. Let's see. Let's test our hypothesis that we'll be able to get closer to the flower if we have, um, if we're a bee. And it seems to be correct. What's nice is that we're not actually using our various flying resources in order to do this. And functionally, it's very similar to flying with Kazooie. You hit A to, to go higher, and uh, what's nice is you don't need a launch pad, right? The only downside is I don't think I can like ground pound or anything, but we can get pretty high up here. <laughs> and so we can, we can get this Jinjo um, with relative ease, which is nice. It's a good backup plan. I'm glad it worked out. Now the next question is, is there anything even higher up that I just wasn't aware of? It seems my answer is no. <laughs> Look how high up we are. That's pretty cool. Oh, there is! My instincts were on point! So we got ourselves a nice Jiggy as a result. That's pretty cool. That makes me happy. Okay, so now that we have obtained that Jinjo and the Jiggy, I don't think there's much else for us to actually do in the springtime right now. So I'm wondering, we can go to the summer, right? Oh wait, no, actually there's the whole beehive, right? Like this whole beehive right here that we can actually go inside. So let's go ahead and do that and then see what happens if we go to the summer. I'm curious to know if, if it's worthwhile to, I don't know, should we switch back from being a bee? Or is there gonna be a mumbo hut in the summer as well? Bzz. Hello, fat little bee. We Zubbas are guarding Grunty's golden honey piece. We've been told there's a honey bear out there. <laughs> I love it. So I wonder if we're able to actually take it. No, we can't do anything. But I, I think we actually fight the, the bees as Banjo when we eventually come in here. Oh, there's a, there's a Jinjo. We are struggling to fly through here right now. Let's, let's take it down a notch. <laughs> so we can just platform as opposed to try to fly up here. So we got ourselves our second Jinjo, which is nice. And yeah, I don't remember exactly how we can get in here. We'll have to open up the opening, I guess. Because I don't think I could come through very easily. And it's pretty difficult to get out of the, the beehive. But we made it. Okay. And so with that, we'll head on out, I guess. What I'm thinking is I'll probably want to stay as Bee Banjo for now. Just because... Well, actually, I should check behind here to see if there's anything. I bet if I fall into the water, I automatically transform back or, or something like that. But if I can't switch back to Bee Banjo, it's going to be a pain to have to come back all the way out here um, into spring in order to switch back. So 
for the time being, we'll stick his B-Banjo and work from there. The unfortunate thing is that whenever I'm B-Banjo, I'm going to be quite a bit slower than I would be otherwise, right? Compared to the Talon Trot, B-Banjo is rather slow. But I guess I should take advantage of being a bee while I can and see if there's anything up here. At the moment, it doesn't seem so, which is actually quite surprising. I would have expected, at the very least, an extra life. Right? Because this is kind of like a nice little, this is a little Easter egg territory here. Where it's like, oh, you're, you're a bee in the main area? So might as well, you know, elevate yourself and, and see what's going on, but doesn't seem like there's actually anything to be gained from that, which is unfortunate. But nevertheless, we'll continue onward as our very slow <laughs> bee banjo selves into summer. Mumbo magic get weak. Oh. So I guess it wasn't even really a question at all, or not an option in the first place. Airy hungry now. Need five caterpillars. Okay. So we will hunt down those caterpillars for you, I promise. Dang, those, those things have gotten a lot bigger. I love the music from this, though. Is that a Jinjo? Yeah, that's totally a Jinjo. Awesome. That was a sneaky one. Look at how high up the grass has gone. Oh, there's a caterpillar. Eek! Hungry animals like caterpillars. <laughs> so cute. So now this water has all dried up, apparently. So we can actually access this area. I wonder... I can probably... Actually, I'm just going to take this guy out. You look pretty strong. Can you move this boulder for me? Yes, we can. As I take this guy out, so he stops attacking me while I try to do so. We can do this attack, and that'll probably destroy it. Great. Wow, what strength! Come inside, and I'll give you a reward. Sounds good to me. I mean, we got a mumbo token. That's that's reward enough for me. Oh, can I not... How do I get inside? Do I have to go... Oh, you know what? I, I don't know if the... it'll be some sort of shenanigans, but I'll probably have to go back to spring so that I can swim up that area with the water being present. Unless maybe, maybe it's present in the fall again. I'm not sure, but for the time being, we'll check out this ravine and see if there's anything interesting down here. There is. In fact, we've unlocked fall now. So we're unlocking the seasons, slowly, but surely. And now we can head on upwards and start our ascent again. Again, we found two caterpillars, which is good. We have to find a few more. We can check in on that plant that we, well, planted in the spring. <laughs> and see how that's doing. Those things are back, which is good to know. What's going on over on that side? I don't see anything. I should have. Did you see that? I got, like, stun locked. Oh, man. Gotta, I'm gonna have to take it slowly. Sorry. For those of you that have seen me play Celeste, Super Meat Boy, you guys know I like to platform fast. And I definitely got ahead of myself there, so... I'm gonna have to take it slowly, and as I come across these enemies, take them out. It is a bit frustrating that they respawn every single time, but given that each of these seasons is a different level, more or less, I can understand the rationale behind it. So, we'll just need to be patient. And be patient, we will. Alright, what about over here? No! Darn it. I tried to do the beak attack. <laughs> here you guys are getting a demonstration of why I dislike vertical levels. Now we have to take all this time to get all the way back to where we were. But I was trying to do the beak attack in the middle of the flight, I guess and then also come back to where I had jumped from so that, well, I can, you know, attack and then deal with it afterwards. Um, but obviously that didn't work out as intended. Interesting. So they have two different, like, attack type loops. That one, that is a lot shorter, and then the longer one. And so I think what had tripped me up is that I got a shorter attack 
cycle, I guess, or a shorter attack, and thus he had already hidden his head by the time I was actually attacking, and as a result, I missed. The other thing worth noting is, well, if I try to do the, the beak attack at the height of that enemy, I'm probably not going to make it all the way across, so I think I may actually just be better off timing it so that I make the jump. Let's see. And then here's the long attack. What? Are you kidding me? I had my beak attack out, and I was even later on the jump for that. Oh my goodness, guys. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. You guys are sitting there like, oh man, this is going to be a long episode. <laughs> gonna be a long episode. It's alright, we'll, we'll do what we can. And hope for the best. This is just one of these jumps. Why is it proving so difficult? I thought I could just avoid it altogether, kind of by going outward a bit more. But, that's alright. Can I attack this with that? No, I guess not. Whoa! So it did the it did two short patterns in a row as opposed to oh really? Oh my goodness. So we've got a lot going on here. We have our camel friend. Oh no, it's you again. Gobi thought he was safe here. Nope, you are not safe here. I thought I could go around, but I couldn't have Will you stop doing that? It took me ages to find more water. So we're watering the plant that we planted in the in the spring. So it continues to grow, which is reassuring. We have a mumbo token out in the corner. We have plenty of bees that are coming for us, which is not reassuring. We did, however, find another caterpillar, which is good. Can I jump up there like this? No, I can't. We gotta run, 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 run. No! I don't know if you guys could tell, but basically what was happening was I tried to crouch and then do the, the crouch jump to get up there, but because the animation for getting out of Talon Trot was so long, when I would try to get out of Talon Trot, I would not be fully done with the animation, and then I would uh, try to jump or, or crouch again, and then, well, <laughs> then you saw what happened, right? <laughs> so, what changes were made, or we have to recollect the caterpillars, we have to, so we kind of have to redo everything. Granted, we didn't really accomplish much, did we? <laughs> so we'll do that. We have the notes, we have the mumbo tokens we collected, and I would imagine, I should have checked, but I imagine we have the fall switch activated as well. So, we're not too far behind, admittedly. We have two caterpillars, and we know the location of the third one. So, you know, we're, we're starting from a better position, but yeah. Why does it do that every time it's like the first time I kill one of those? They're so emphatic about it. Alright, well, for what it's worth, we took it out, <laughs> and I can be happy about that. Just to be safe, okay, so we did actually finish up the fall switch. So we should be able to make that jump easily now. I, I get the feeling that there's got to be a more convenient way of taking out that enemy, right? So it's not that I have to fall intentionally, essentially, in order to actually kill it, right? That would just be pretty backwards from a game design standpoint. But it's not completely out of question. Just to be safe. <laughs> okay. And across we go. Mumbo's hut is still here, which is nice. That's good to know. We can go down here, we can pick up this caterpillar. There's also a Mumbo token over here, I believe, that we... No, we did get it! Darn it! <laughs> now I gotta avoid these bees again. Alright, come on. Crouch jump, Banjo. Nice. Looks like they can't actually climb up here, interestingly enough. I'll pick up one of these feathers, because we desperately could use some invincibility every now and then. And we'll continue onwards. Can we transform into a bee here as well? I don't know. We can probably find out. There's a caterpillar there, so that's nice. 
Should we go and get that now? Or should we wait? I should probably go get it now, honestly. Because once I'm actually a bee, I probably won't be able to interact with the eagle or whatever who needs the five caterpillars. So I should try to get all five caterpillars, just kind of surveying the land there, um, before I get up there. What? Uh-oh, this is not good. Well, I guess we can switch to Talentraw to make it work like that. But that was obviously not ideal. All right, we can make it back over this way. Jump over this this tentacle here. <clears throat> Jump over this tentacle here. <laughs> he says emphatically. Got a mumbo token over there that we can pick up, which is always nice. I like that the songs of the different areas are different, not like exceptionally so, right? Okay. What? Wow, we took so much damage from that. There are a couple notes here. Honestly, before I forget that they're there, I just want to pick them up now. Because again, trying to backtrack in this place would be rough, right? Imagine if you essentially have to check the same level multiple times as you go through the same level in each season. All the different rooms and all the different uh, platforms and, and everything. But now we are in the clear for, for at least those two. So we can head on up. We have another one of these guys. Oops, that's not what I wanted. We'll pick up this honeycomb because you and I both know that we desperately need it right now. We can do some platforming with these leaves that have grown since the last time we saw them. Now, where are we going once we're up here? Okay. Just wanted to come on up to this height first and take a look at the area before doing anything else. Now, I, wa I was tempted to go to that launch pad, but I was like, that enemy is going to be there, and I'm just going to go straight for the jiggy. Not even worry about it. Now, where can I go up to with this? Okay, so more leaves on in this direction. Oops. I tried to overcorrect my, my landing a little bit. Yikes. <laughs> oh, man. This sort of platforming always makes me nervous. The, the prospect of potentially falling is so intimidating. All right, so we can go over here and there's a launch pad. What? I guess my depth perception was off. I guess my depth perception was off is all I can say to that. I was very surprised that I didn't actually land on the leaf there. But hey, that's the, that's the name of the game, right? Come on, don't get caught under the leaf. Thank you. And again to the right. One of the things I like to do is to look for my shadow. But sometimes if you don't have like a lot of time to flutter over a platform, you don't really have that luxury. Okay. Let's go on up again. Nice. Can I? Camera? Thank you. I love the squeaky sound effect these guys make. Can you hear that? <laughs> it's so funny. And it looks like we have the beehive over there. Okay, so we've got quite a bit to explore. Let's go on over this way first. This little birdhouse or treehouse or cabin or whatever we want to call it. Nest, I guess, <laughs> is making quite a bit of progress, which is pretty cool. I think we can go around back, maybe? and access that jiggy? No, I guess not. Camera gonna work with me? All right. Then I guess we'll head in here and see what we can find. It's a little bit on the difficult side. Oh, I almost walked right off there. So there's an extra life and a jiggy. We'll probably need to come back here as a bee. I don't realistically see any way for me to get that right now. So there's some more platforming we can do there or there. Let's go this way. Okay. So far, so good. Camera. Readjusting. I'm pretty sure we've, we've, for the most part, explored all of the lower levels, so I feel pretty confident with where we're at. 
I've got this house here. I guess before I potentially fall, I might as well go in here and see how, um, what's his name, Grabnuts or, or Nabnuts? Bro, Nabnuts eating too many acorns. I've got none left for next winter now. Oh, I'm sorry, friend. Well, I believe me, we're trying to look for some for you. We'll, we'll find them. What was, did you guys hear that sound effect? <laughs> what was that sound effect, Nabnuts? There, you have a guest. Okay, well, he's belching plenty and a variety of things. All right, well, we'll, we'll come back. Let's explore these areas. Oh, there's another caterpillar down here. Does that mean there are more than more than five? Yeah. Interesting. I wonder if these caterpillars will be relevant for the next season. If there are more than five of them. Oops. Thank you. Thank you for barking in the background, dog. Always appreciated. But yeah. I don't know if there are gonna be more than more than five or not. Alright, sounds like my dog has calmed down, so hopefully we can get back to recording, hopefully interrupt uninterrupted, I should say. And we'll let the, the platforming continue. Notably, we're going to have some enemies to, to take out here, so we're going to want to take it nice and slowly. Almost overshot that jump there. That would have been rather unpleasant. And we should have quite a few caterpillars for our friend Irie. Or Eerie, or Airy, or whatever it may be. Yummy, juicy caterpillar, nice. Okay. Keep on taking them. Now you're gonna sleep again? <laughs> After eating a full meal, full belly, feel like taking a nap? Or no, you're just gonna grow. Okay. Burp. Airy, full now. Needs more sleep. <laughs> okay. I mean, I guess we'll keep an eye out for caterpillars, obviously. There may still be more, and there's the very real possibility that they are relevant in a future season. So, so we'll keep an eye out for them, but it's nice that we've got that covered. So much of this level so far seems like long-term investments, right? Helping out that, that uh, beaver, planting that plant, feeding our eagle friend. All of those are clearly going to be jiggies at some point, but right now they're all just investments. Is there anything relevant here? Nope. Okay. You can bust down the door again and head on in. Is there a jiggy up here again? I doubt it. The tentacles seem larger, maybe? Maybe? Is there anything different up here? Well, there's an extra life. It's in a different spot. I guess that's worth noting, <laughs> potentially. We can come up here. We can do the same platforming as before. Can I take a look around? All right. Well, I mean, I guess, I guess they reward your, your climb by giving you an extra life. Not that that's incredibly useful, but hey, it's something. And obviously, in the beginning, or rather, any season you would choose to do this, you would get a jiggy for doing it as well. So that's fine for now. I won't complain. But there was a whole segment of platforming we didn't do near the beehive. So let's take a look at that and see what would have come about had we chosen to do that platforming instead. So we can go on over this way and make our way back to that launch pad. And eventually we're going to want to transform into... Um... Whoa, camera change. Camera change while you're being launched is not the most friendly of uh, platforming devices. Launch pad, okay. But yeah, eventually we'll want to switch into a B. There's an area we didn't explore over that way, so we'll want to take a look at that. Actually, I'm tempted to look at that now, because I think getting out of the beehive might not be the most easy thing, and if we do have to fall, I wouldn't want to have to come back here and then climb all the way back up. So we've got ourselves a caterpillar, which is nice. I don't think I'm going to risk falling and go for that golden feather right now. Instead, I'd like to go for this mumbo token over here. Because you guys, you guys know me and my mumbo tokens, right? So we got that. Might be easier to just platform over this way. Now the question is, 
No, it doesn't look like there's anything further down there. Okay, great. So now that we've done that, let's see what if, if we can explore this beehive a little bit better. Maybe we can... Ah, uh, this looks like it can break open. Wait a minute. Oh, I only have three feathers. <laughs> I'm going to come back in a second. I am going to go get that feather. I, I know what this is. And I know that the experience is very different if you have a sufficient number of golden feathers. So that is what we are going to do. Right now, I think, I think it's worth it. So let's go on over, see what we can do. This also, interestingly enough, is a good way for us to get to Mumbo's hut, actually, now that I realize it. This branch extends over his little area. So we don't need to worry about the launch pad and all that jazz, and... Okay! So now we have five feathers, which is not as many as I would like, but it is better than nothing, and it's certainly not too few that I would rather go explore around the rest of the level looking for them, rather than uh, than just go about trying to do this. So they're, they're prepped for a honey bear coming in ready to steal their stuff, The honey bear. He's after Grunty's golden honey piece. Sting him, Zubbas. So you'll notice, basically, they're all going to keep coming at us. This is a good trick for taking care of a lot of them. Zarg, he's beating us. Oh well. We were getting bored of guarding it anyway. Of course. I'm sure you were. That's totally why you gave it up. So, it turns out five was, like, just enough. We probably might have been able to get away with four, but we definitely made five work, so that's that's always good. I've never actually even really done that uh, a way that doesn't use the invincibility feathers, so I'm, I'm curious to know what that would look like. But So we got that, which is lovely, and now we can go on over to Mumbo's, transform into a bee, go to that one little treehouse area, and... I think that's really it. I don't know if there's much else. We'll take a look around when we are a bee, but I don't think there's a whole lot else to do that at least comes to mind, right? I guess we can take a look up here. Too hot for magic. Mumbo wants suntan. What? No, I don't I don't like that. <laughs> Too hot for magic. Well, here's a Mumbo token. I mean, we'll take that. But then how are we going to get... Hmm... Maybe maybe the idea is that we're just supposed to see that that's there, but we have to wait for it to be finished further in order to actually do something with it. I would bet, actually, that that's the case. So I think we're actually going to be done with the summer for now, then. We've done our planting, we've done our, our flying... <laughs> well, none of it. We've done our climbing, I should say. And we collected a Jinjo. I think we're good. So we've unlocked the fall. We unlocked the fall. Interesting. So we'll go to that and see what we can find before everything, before everybody hibernates, I guess, <laughs> in the winter. Bear get eerie, more caterpillars. There we go. Need 10 this time. Okay, so we got two from the other one that we still have. I think we have one golden feather left, right? Let's get that token, and we're good. So we had just enough to get by. Lovely. I love all of the piles of leaves. I don't know about you guys, but growing up, I loved whenever we would rake leaves, putting them in a huge pile so we could just jump in. So there's three caterpillars. Oh, so we're gonna need to find so many more in this level. It's good to know. I would bet that they hid the orange Jinjo in this area. I think it would make sense. We'll definitely fit in with the rest of the environment. Oh, and we have notes to get in here? Okay, maybe, maybe I can turn into a bee. Actually, I would bet that I can turn into a bee because Mumbo's excuse was that it was too hot, right? But now it should be nice and cool. So we've got a note, got ourselves another caterpillar. We will come back. I don't see a caterpillar over there. So we'll come back there later and see if we can transform into a bee and then see what advantages that brings, obviously. But for the time being, 
We're gonna do our usual climb, pick up the notes along the way, inspect all of the branches. Sorry, I was late on the jump there. Got distracted. Anything over there of interest? A caterpillar. Again, we're looking for quite a few more in this season compared to the previous one, so it should generally be more dense. We're still looking for five more, which is quite a bit. But yeah, one of the things that, I mean, this this level in and of itself is pretty polarizing because of the fact that you essentially play through the same level four times it, with only subtle variations. But I do appreciate that. There's a lot of cool conceptual work with the evolution of that environment over the course of the four seasons, especially in response to different actions you take, right? And taking advantage of that. And then, of course, the aesthetic of each of these is so different. <laughs> so that's all I had to do, guys. That is all I had to do. Wow. <laughs> wow. But um, the aesthetic is very cool. Uh, I love that with every season, they really highlight the beauty of each of those seasons. Do you guys have a favorite season? I feel like I'm really, really torn in that regard. I really like spring. I really like fall because they're, the temperatures are more moderate. You can enjoy being outside without being excessively hot or exceptionally cold even. Um, in the fall, in the, well, in the spring, from like a plant life standpoint, everything is blooming up in there. Do you guys see that orange ginger? Also, wow, this bowl has grown over time. That's for sure. But yeah, everything is blooming in the spring, so you get that. But then everything is changing colors in the fall. I enjoy a lot of activities that can be done in the summer or the winter, but I think those activities themselves are all that I really enjoy, right? It's not so much that I enjoy, for example, how hot it gets in the summer, but I enjoy that there's so much more you can do outside when it's incredibly sunny. There are beaches you can visit, etc. But, um, and similarly in the winter, I occasionally like the cold, right? It can be satisfying to go outside and, you know, just have a little bit of, like, chill. I love how cold air smells, or, like, feels. Which is, like, a really weird thing to say, but, but I really do. Thanks, Gobi, again, by the way. Right, that's it. I'm off to the lava world. You'll never find me there. Lava world. Where was that again? What was the lava world again? I'm probably blanking on it. Rusty Bucket, no. Mad Monster Mansion, no. Gobi's Valley, no. Freeze Easy Peak. Bubble Gloop Swamp, no. Clanker's Cavern, no. Treasure Trove Cove. Mumbo's Mountain, no. Huh. I am curious about that. I'll, I'll look into that, because I it, there might be something interesting if we find Gobi again. But I don't know if I've ever actually done that or like looked into it. So we can probably just pick up this when we get, um, when we transform into a bee. So I'm not going to worry about this a ton right now. And instead, we're going to go about our business. Continuing to climb. Did I get this already? Just to be safe. <laughs> Alright. But yeah, and, and then in the winter, the cold can be really nice. Like I said, I, I like the smell of cold air, if that makes any sense. Those of you that spend a lot of time in cold climates will definitely understand. But I get it's something that I experience a lot when I go skiing. Ooh, this I feel like these this is gonna be some tougher platforming. Because these leaves are not quite as bountiful as they were in the summer. But we got ourselves a mumbo token, which is in and of itself very much worth it. But I like a lot of the activities you can do during the winter. I really enjoy skiing. I really enjoy building snow forts with my brothers in particular. Don't fall. Oh, Banjo, come on. I started to do the flutter, and then as I was doing the flutter, I was like, oh, I should have just turned, I should have turned back, and I should have just done my little beak attack, and it would have been really helpful, but nope. Um, but yeah, so I like skiing. I like building snow forts. I like how everything looks with snow. Just like, how almost like serene and, and, and clean and I don't know, it's... There's definitely a wonderful aesthetic to just everything being covered in snow. But after a while, the temperatures being that cold become a lot less fun when it's been, you know, five, six months or so of winter, which is what it's like where I currently am. And if you don't have snow and instead have something like a slushy mess or just really cold rain, winter is not even not even really worth it at that point. I guess something else I really like that is just 
I guess not dependent on snow, but but it's still there, is um, the, the idea of like a warm fire, right? So, oh, and look, look, there's an acorn over there. So that's gonna be another collectible we're dealing with. Looks like there's something else over there jumping around, maybe another acorn. But can I get up there? Probably eventually, but not from this particular platform. Um, but yeah, the idea of when everything is cold outside, people love to have fires, whether that's a bonfire outside or even just like a warm fire indoors. And that's something that I really enjoy. That sort of cozy environment is really nice. There's an extra life there. Oh, we got ourselves a mumbo token. There's a mumbo token. We got to mobilize, guys. <laughs> we can go over that way. We'll, we'll visit that in a minute. Actually, should I just do that now? I hear the squeakiness of a caterpillar, so I'm sure we're near one. But for the time being, let's explore this little bit here. Just to be safe. Doesn't look like there's much going on, but again, I certainly wouldn't want to leave a stone unturned and then find myself at the end of the experience wondering, wait a minute, did I find everything I need? So here's a caterpillar. I'm gonna go Talon Trot just so I don't slip. And I don't know if there's anything going on in here. Maybe they'll be upset if we're in here, but... Bzz, nothing in here for you now, bear. <laughs> We've all moved out. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. Did I crash your party? So we'll pick up this caterpillar, too. We have nine. So we only really need one more, and we'll be good. Unless, unless of course, we need another one, or another set of caterpillars in the final season in the winter. But I don't think so. Either way, there's a little bit of a branch over here I'd like to explore, so let's go ahead and do that. What? <laughs> I missed there, <laughs> but I didn't get hit either, so I was like, all right, I mean, we, we take those. This flower is just huge. This Venus flytrap, rather. Which I, is that a flower? I don't think so, but I don't know. <laughs> Not a botanist by any means. <gasps> Oof, do you guys see that? I almost missed the, the leaf, but that flutter saved me. Okay, so that covers that mumbo token. There's an invincibility feather over there. We're not going to take the time to go and get that. Is there anything down here? It looks like there might have been some notes. Nope. Okay. Then we will continue with our ascent. Yeah, we can definitely get that jiggy as a B. Assuming we can transform. Oh, wait. Got to go this way. You can do this platforming while still on the Talon Trot, and I'm pretty sure it's faster, but I like having the flexibility of being able to do the... I don't even know what this is called. The, the Brie or whatever <laughs> sound Kazooie makes. So I hear the squeakiness of that caterpillar. It's probably on the platform below, but luckily we can come in here, and this little treehouse is all set up and good to go. So we can pick up the Jiggy on the corner. Nice. And with that, we have five. Anything in this corner? No? Okay. Just to be safe, we'll want to check around back. See if there's anything hiding back here. Again, I wanted to check last time, too, because... For a game with, you know, as many collectibles as Banjo-Kazooie does, that's a prime hiding spot. And there is our 11th Caterpillar, so we are... We are doing more than fine on Caterpillars. So if we do only end up actually needing 10... No, 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 don't fall. Oh my goodness. I panicked and I tried to go back. I tried to... <laughs> I did the attack too early so I didn't get the full height of my jump and then I tried to backtrack away from the bug and it just didn't work out. Guess we'll take advantage of being here while we can. Here's our, our friend. Oh, here you are at last. I've been waiting months to give you this. Thanks, Naughty, thanks. Which, in and of itself, is a pretty uh, funny pun of a name. And so, here we are. Anything of interest? I'm trying to remember. There's There are a couple notes. Anything interesting on the walls? There's something back here behind the fire. Looks like an extra life. Just like in Mad Monster Mansion. Oops. Looks like I fell off the shelf. <laughs> We're at 63, which is not a nice number, but I already, I remember that I noted I got a couple sets of odds, or of odd numbers of notes earlier, so it's not completely surprising. 
Okay. So we've gotten that at least. That was something we needed to do eventually. Would have made the most sense at the end, I guess. But hey, while we're here, might as well. And now we can begin our climb again. So we gotta get our way up to Eri, who needs these caterpillars, right? What's gonna be the way we want to climb, though? That is the question. We'll go this way. I think this way was a little bit more, a little bit easier overall compared to the leaves. Yeah, this definitely has a lot less room for error. Er, opportunity for error. Has a lot more room for error, I would say. Platforming on these little segments is a lot easier than trying to make the really precise jumps for the leaves. Okay, we can do this. Make things a little bit easier. Just gonna jump over. And I, I supposedly missed, but you know what? That's okay. Aw, and Nabnuts is out here. He looks pretty upset. Hi there, bear buddy. I need six more acorns before winter comes. Have you seen any? Well, I, I vaguely saw one of them. <laughs> right? I thought I saw one of them off in the distance. We have a couple different places we can go right now. So there's one up here. Unfortunately, if you guys can see that... Oh, wait. Are there two right there? There are two. So I think we're going to need to be a bee. Actually, no. If I see this correctly, we can get this one like this. Oops. Come on. So we got one. And if I... I don't know, guys. Can we... Is there a flight pad anywhere? I would bet that this is right over the other one. Right over the center of this platform here. What do you guys think? Oh, I fell off of it. I fell off of it. Oh, but I made it. Oh my goodness. That was... That was scary, guys. That was scary. That was not a fun experience. <laughs> I do not want to do that again. All right, Talon Trot, so we don't slip. All right, we have three acorns. So at the very least, the acorns seem to be in close proximity to our friend Nabnuts here. But I, yeah, so you can see the shadow actually. So I think that if we, let's do this. I'm gonna approach from this end. That way if I overshoot the distance, I'll probably land on the, the stretch of platform there anyways. So we got it, and we are in the clear. Nice. So four acorns down, two to go. The question is, well, where are they? They might be up here. In this little secret passage, I guess, to, to Nabnuts' home. <laughs> what are we going to find up here? We got some eggs. Okay. Anything else? Let's use our first-person perspective. Oh, there's an acorn. You kind of hear the, the, the boing sound effect. I love how rare, just like, they literally just put eyes on everything. <laughs> Doesn't matter if it's like a leaky bucket, an acorn, anything. You can put two eyes on it like that and it looks cute and it immediately looks rare, right? Also, wow, this level is taking a long time. We haven't even gone through the winter yet. Is it worth splitting up into two episodes? I feel like at this point we're already too far along. I guess we can start to give him the acorns we found. We still need one more. Hmm. Nemnut hasn't got something. Is there one in here? Oh, there's a caterpillar. That's nice. Ah, there is one. You gotta check your old house first, Nabnuts. Anything else in the house? Nope. Okay. Alright, so then with that, we've set up Nabnuts for the winter. Yippee! That's all the acorns I need. Here, take this. I'll see you in spring. Not unless we break in in winter, am I right? Okay, platforming continues. So far going pretty well. And here's the switch for winter, nice. We actually, we only have three more jiggies to find, which is pretty crazy to think about. I think we have a decent number of notes to find still though. And we definitely need to turn into a bee because there are a couple flowers that we, I've seen around the area 
that have a few notes in them. But even then, we're at what, 70? Yeah, so 71, 72, 73, and then 74. So we're making good progress in that regard too. All right, let's feed our friend Aerie now. <laughs> let's just chuck all these caterpillars at him <laughs> and hope for the best. Yeah, definitely as the game goes on, the worlds get bigger, the levels get more complex, they get more difficult, so they do take longer. I hope you guys enjoy this. I know in the past I've had some, I've had mixed feedback about longer versus shorter episodes. Some people appreciate the shorter ones, some people really like, oh, hour, hour and a half? Like, that's great. Of course, if you want to take them in shorter bursts, you always can. You know, watch half an hour now, half an hour later, but... Thank you, Bear. Very soon be Big Bird. Must have sleep first. Okay. So, I mean, we'll get one Jiggy from this guy, right? We'll get that Jiggy on top of the flower. So that's two there. And that, I think, only leaves one more Jiggy to be found. Right? I can't think of what it is, though. It's probably winter-specific. And with that, I mean, we'll do our usual climb up here just to be safe. See where the extra life is hidden this time around. But I don't think... Oh, there's a Mumbo token? We're doing it. We're doing it, guys. For the Mumbo token. And we still have one golden feather. Nice. Anything of interest? The usual? Seems like it, right? I mean, it totally wasn't worth it to come up here, right? But actually, no. We found the Mumbo token. And Mumbo tokens in and of themselves are worth it. Banjo's gonna be the... Have the highest, most valuable Mumbo collection in all of Spiral Mountain. Granted, he's one of like four people in Spiral Mountain, but hey, who's who's looking at those details? All right, so next up, I think is just let's see if we can actually transform into a bee. We have some notes to collect. We have that jiggy on top of the flower, and then I think we're good to go. Where is where is Mumbo's area? I wish, I kind of wish I could pull up like a mini map or something. That would be nice. But basically, I just want to see which branch can I go off of to fall into Mumbo's area. It's not over there. You can probably see from up here, maybe. Is it over there? Yes, it is. So it was back over this way. Darn it. That's okay. We'll head over. All right, so we are gonna fall down, I guess, <laughs> right? <laughs> we can definitely fall quite a ways. I think it's directly under where we are right now, right? Let's hope for the best. So you can kind of <laughs> use your flutter there. That's the word I was looking for. You can use your flutter there to break your fall, which is really nice for, well, not dying. <laughs> All right, Mumbo, come on. You're not gonna transform us? Mumbo busy, sweet many leaves, no magic today. What? Then how are we supposed to get those notes inside those flowers without, I guess we'll have to use invincibility. Right? 78, yeah. That also means, oh, there's the Jinjo one as well. So there's on top of the flower, there's Airy, and then there's the Jinjo. Those are all of the yeah, those are all of the jiggies for Click Clock Wood. So, at the moment, <laughs> what's difficult is instead getting all of the notes. And then, obviously, we have to find the two secret... What's it called? Um, honeycomb pieces, right? So, hmm... We only have one invincibility feather, though. That's not something I like. So I guess we're gonna have to come up here. I could fall on it, right? I think that's the, is that the beehive? Yeah. So I could fall onto it from the beehive. So that solves that. Then the other question is, where were those flowers that have all of the, the jiggies, right? Or all of the notes? Here's one of them. What happens if I do this? Well, they did three damage. I got two of the notes. I mean, I'll do this to get the third one. Come on, come on. Oh, man. 
What's the deal with that? Now I'll have to heal up a bit. See if I can find some feathers. That thing almost surprised me. Almost. But yeah, I've got to find some feathers. There's got to be a better way to do that, right? There's got to be a better way. So there's one there. There's one over here. And the thing is, we just take so much damage every time we get hit. Is there really not a better way? Hmm. I'm trying to think. If they would really make us use all of our golden feathers just for that specifically, right? I don't know, guys. What if I were to do... eggs? Hmm. You know what? Maybe... maybe the notes will be there in the winter. And actually, no, the, the items inside those have been different every single season. But what was interesting is, when I did this, you could hear, right, that it made a sound like it was incorrect. Okay, that wasn't really what I meant, but... <laughs> hmm... really want to be able to do that, but I'm not sure how. I thought we'd be able to do that with the B, but clearly we can only be the B in spring, which is problematic. Let's see here. I guess that works, more or less. So here's that one. We can always try... Can I climb this? What is this called again? The the stamen? Maybe? Hmm. I don't know, guys. I am kind of, uh... Running out of ideas, admittedly. Got that guy to deal with. <laughs> I can get this one, probably, by if I fall on it correctly. Right? So, we'll take that, but I can almost guarantee you that that's not the way that we're supposed to do that. So, there was that one other flower that we saw all the way over there. The other question is, how many more of those were there? I was under the impression I'd be able to turn into a bee and then just, well, find the rest of them by flying and, and doing that very easily. It's also worth noting, for the past two levels, there hasn't really been much flight involved in the game, right? We haven't found a flight pad or anything like that. So there's that one again. And unlike the other flower we just kind of worked with, this one doesn't really have something we can very clearly go on top of in order to kind of ground pound or I forget what they call it in this game. But do that type of attack in order to get those. Hmm. So there's one gold feather. I guess, for what it's worth, I mean, we can go and see on the rest of the climb if there are any more golden feathers. Because we could use them. I mean, if we have one of them, we can at least have somewhat of a chance of getting all three. Unlikely. I'm sure if you were, you know, like a pro, you could do it, but I am not a pro. Pretty good, but not a pro by any means. No golden feathers here. There is, however, some health, and we could absolutely use that. So I'll stand in the corner here, fire away, get my talon trot ready. Okay, so at the very least, if we do try to get them, we'll be starting from full health, which is nice. Don't slide off. Thank you, thank you. It's kind of funny when you look at the beehives, or the, the bee farms or whatever in the corner, <laughs> the bees are just kind of frozen around it. 
Oh, almost dropped. That would have been less than ideal. So again, still just that set of notes there. So I really do think it's only those three. And this is the remainder of the climb, right? Yeah. So, hmm. I'm trying to think. We can, uh, we can take out this guy here. Where is that flower? Could we potentially drop onto it? <laughs> this is so incorrect. I, it's probably comical. It's over here, right? So... Hmm. Yeah, I mean, we can, we can give it a go, right? We don't have much to lose. Jump, 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 jump. Stand up and jump immediately. Okay? That, that works. <laughs> that works. We'll take it. <laughs> what a mess that was. Am I right? <laughs> but hey, we take it. We take those. Alright, let's get rid of this guy so we can heal up a little bit. <laughs> what a mess. <laughs> what a mess. But it worked. It worked, and that's what matters. So we fell onto it, picked up a couple notes. Using, I guess, the invincibility frames or something like that from our standing animation. And then immediately switched so that we could use our... What's it called? Our invincibility feathers. Our wonder wing in order to get it. Also, wow, this episode really has been going on a while. I can feel it in my voice. I haven't been recording a ton, just in general. Um, so my voice is not used to recording. It's been nice getting back into it, though. I will note that for sure. And it looks like kind of at the at the end of the line here, right? We don't have to worry about... Oh, no, we have the snowmen again. We have the snowmen again. It looks like everything is kind of frozen over, but we must be able to get under, right? Because <laughs> obviously there is a... Oh, dog's going at it again. But obviously there's a life underneath there. We can probably jump off of this to get up here. And we finally... Oh, I wanted to get a <laughs> invincibility feather, but that's okay, I guess. No, we missed! Uh, that's okay, I guess. I don't think we'll get anything this time around. Oh, look at Eri. Look at Eri. Eri looks awesome. Oh, and there's a Jinjo at the top of Mumbo's place. Lovely, and another flight pad, so we can very safely go over here. I should probably just not fly, so that I can um, more systematically explore the area. Also, you can see kind of Banjo sliding. Bear win gamer pick to spruce up gamer profile. Nice. Oh, is that for collecting all of the Jinjos? That's pretty neat. What? No, Mumbo. Mumbo's on vacation, you hairy fool. Come back in spring. All right, well... I mean, power to him, he's been doing a lot of work, I guess. I always, like, am kind of confused by Mumbo's allegiance. I don't know if he's actually, like, one of Gruntilda's, like, on Gruntilda's side or actually on Banjo's side. Does he just, like, collect the Mumbo tokens because that's, like, his currency and that's what he does? Or does he genuinely want to help Banjo? I don't know. Because he seems to be, you know, head over heels for Gruntilda whenever they show up in a cutscene together too, right? So, it's pretty funny. Alright, um, can we do much climbing here? I think we can. We can at least pick up some more of these gold feathers, which is really nice. Because obviously we were missing quite a few at the end of that last season. There are no feathers to platform with, unfortunately. But we can, whoa, camera? We can, however, still use some of the platforms. Although, notably, things are a lot more slippery now than they were before. And did you hear that? I think that was Harry in the background. Or maybe what you're hearing is just my dad stomping on the floor upstairs. Because <laughs> whenever he walks... You guys, you guys know, people like walk in very different manners. And some people just walk a lot more gracefully than others. My dad is not one of those people. <laughs> whenever he walks, you know it's him because it sounds like an elephant. And he's not a big guy by any means, but he just carries a lot of weight in his step, I guess. But anyways, it's something I need to consider when recording, unfortunately. But oh man, I'm gonna have to take a break after this one. Been a fun episode. I think concerns 
about, you know, vertical levels aside, it's been going very well. Is there something in here? There is a mumbo token. Lovely. Now, can I, can I get out of here? <laughs> Maybe I should have waited until I was a bee to try to get that. Can I jump on the side? Oh, clutch, clutch, clutch. Come on. Nice. All right, let the platforming resume. The only downside, of course, of the winter here is the platforms and everything, rather, are quite a bit slippier, more slippery, rather, <laughs> than they were in the past, which is not conducive to tight platforming. But we will make do with what we have. Anything of interest in here? We still haven't found those secret honeycomb pieces, right? So, can I break in here? Nope. Whoa, oh, Banjo was uh, struggling a little bit there. How about here? Nope. Can I get on top of this? Oh, I can, and I'm very glad I checked. I've been very upset if I missed out on these. I wonder if maybe there were, in the past, other collectibles up here. Well, I guess we'll see if I'm missing any, right? <laughs> so we can come down here. There's that guy over there, which is fine. Need to avoid the snowballs. At the very least, with the Talon Trot, you don't have to deal with a lot of the slippery ice physics that come with just walking as Banjo normally. We can go in here, break into Nabnut's area, see how he's sleeping with an ice and full belly. Mm, acorns. <laughs> Dreaming of acorns, living his best life. Happy for you, bud. Finally, got that full belly. Spending all winter taking a nice nap. Got some eggs. We're still, still low from our adventure in Rusty Bucket Bay. And I think that covers all of that's in here. We'll have to wait till we see him again in the spring. Although I think we can actually break into this area up here, right? Yeah, so let's try that real quick. See what we can find in here. It's not frozen, interestingly. Is there anything of interest, though? No? Just some eggs? Darn it. I mean, eggs are important, don't get me wrong, but it's certainly not that helpful. Alright, well, we'll leave. I guess. Hopefully don't get attacked by those snowmen. Oh, maybe it's that one up there. There's a flight pad, which is worth noting. Yeah, I think I can go in that window and get something. So let's pick up these notes. We're pretty close, actually, to having a full set of notes, which is pretty cool. Our snowman friend is just happily watching us, ready to throw a snowball. That snowball throw was actually a little bit of an overshot, which is surprising. That is pretty difficult to avoid. So we did that successfully. We can continue working our way upward. We don't need to worry about the, the beak things, so we can do this a little bit more comfortably. And now we can visit our friend, Airy. I almost fell off there. That would have been pretty bad. Airy, mighty eagle at last. Watch me as I fly into the sky. Watch you, we will. So majestic, so mighty, so airy. I have reward for Bear Friend. Here it comes. It sounded like he made like a fart sound. <laughs> like, I don't know. It's funny, I don't know if you guys have ever had a, a bird like poop on you or anything like that. I had that happen once when I was on my way home from school. It, it sucked. But anyways, so we've got all the jiggies from the area. And I do think that also confirms there were three caterpillars that we had that we didn't end up actually using. So there are some extra, which is nice. It's, uh, it's very forgiving of the game. <laughs> Given how there are all these different seasons and stuff, it can get pretty easy, easily lost in the mix if you're behind on caterpillars. I think the big thing too is in the fall, if you think you only need five. Oh, we found all 100 notes on this world. Well done. Thank you. I'm very proud. And that's actually all the notes in the game. So that's rather exciting. Now, let's see if there's anything up here. Anything interesting. This is our final time coming up here. Anything noteworthy, game? Anything? No? 
They really just want you to do this the one time to get the jiggy and then every other time it's just an extra life and the final time you do it, there's nothing at all? Wow, that's a bummer. Well, oh, you know what? So at this point we're just missing the two secret honeycomb pieces, right? So that's the first thing that comes to mind. The second of which is we haven't found the grunty switch yet, right? And that's pretty problematic. So, we still have quite a bit of exploration to do, but it seems like we have at least explored the least of this particular level. So, I'm fairly confident that Nabnuts is home if we go in that top window, which will require some some very careful aiming with, um, what was, oh, that looked kind of like a, like a horse or a dog or something. Um, but it'll require some careful aiming in order to actually get in there. This guy's guarding the the flight pad. No! No! We took so much damage. And we're still taking damage. Dang. Come on. Jump and do the attack, Banjo. Oh, that that's brutal. Brutal. So I think, at the very least, we need to do some flying in order to get up there and get inside Nabnuts' home so we can deal with that. And then I think the other thing is, if we visit our friend Naughty, we might be able to do that. Because as you can see, there's got to be some way to get underneath the water, but I'm not entirely sure what that is. But there's a flight pad here. We're full on our invincibility feathers, which is nice. And again, I think the thing I'm most confident about is Nabnuts' is home. So we'll go on up there. There's the grunty switch. So confirm that. That was on the right side there. So we'll we'll get that in a moment. But for now, let's see if we can do this. We're gonna get as close as we can to the window and attack it. So that we don't have to worry about lining it up and everything. Nice. Now okay, well, this uh this works, I guess. Perfect. Now please tell me, please tell me. Is this like his secret storage or something? Yes. There, you, you guys saw it in the corner. So we'll take care of these guys first. And then we can relax and hunt down that secret honeycomb piece. The pen ultimate honeycomb piece. This must be his little storage. I guess it's like equivalent to an attic or something, right? Which is pretty funny. How do we actually get up here? Oh, and, uh, we just climb on this pile here. And there you have it. So there's that. What? I don't even know what these are. Are these like buds of some sort? They kind of look like watermelons. <laughs> Whatever. We got our secret honeycomb piece. And that's what we needed. So now our last thing. Well, we have a couple things. Let's go on over and see if we can get on this flight switch. So that we can find the grunty switch. And then our... Our true last thing is the last honeycomb piece, which I'd actually, before, while I'm up here, so I don't have to waste a lot of red feathers going any higher, I kind of want to fly around up here to see, remember there was that platform that we were as a bee before, right? Um, I want to see if there's anything up here again, and it doesn't look like it. Or maybe that's just the normal, so we, I don't think we were even high enough. So we'll, we'll go on up. But this is, this is definitely as high as it gets. So, if we don't see anything now, we won't see anything. <laughs> Alright, let's fly on down. I saw the grunty switch on my way up, so it's not too high up. And it should be around this area. It's being guarded by a snowman, though, which is not ideal. There it is. Okay, and so you can reach it from just kind of like that walkway, too, which is nice. Let's see here. Are we over it? We are. Boom. Where's it gonna release that? Oh, I bet we need to be the bee to get that. Because, I mean, well, that's just kind of the general trend, right? We usually need to... Wow, sniped from all the way up there. But we generally need to be the mumbo transformation in order to get whatever Gruntilda's lair <laughs> jiggy we need to get. And here is our here's our entrance into the water. Let's hope for the best. Yes, that's right. Swim under there. Icy water takes double air. <laughs> Well, we're gonna see if we can warm up by our friend Naughty here. Come on. Come on. Yo, go, Banjo, go! We don't have a lot of air to spare. 
Okay, we made it out. Awesome. Cor, I don't usually get visitors in winter. Well, sorry, I guess. Um, is there something behind here again? It kind of looks like it's sparkling gold. I guess not. Did I, did I miss it over here, maybe? Is it up on the top shelf? It is. Woo! All right. And so with that, we have maximum health. We have all of the secrets from this area. We have the honeycombs. We have the grunty switch. We have all 10 jiggies. We have all 100 notes. And that means we have all of the notes in the game, all of the secret honeycomb pieces in the game, all the jinjos in the game. And we're just missing one more jiggy, which we obviously unlocked with um, with our friend there. So let's escape this this freezing water. Hopefully, survive, and then we can work on getting that jiggy. Awesome. Aw, and the poor plant over here died, but it gave rise to a mumbo token. So how upset can you be? Am I right? Um, so, we got the, the mumbo token. I would imagine there's maybe a mumbo token if we go through the effort of fighting some of these snowmen. I wouldn't be surprised if one of them had a more important collectible like a mumbo token compared to just you know, your standard honeycomb piece. But for the most part, that completes Click Clock Wood. This episode has been like an hour and a half, and I can feel it in my voice. <laughs> I'm definitely feeling the strain from it, but... But it has been very fun, and in order to get our final piece, I believe, our final jigsaw piece, our final jiggy, we need to be a, well, B. So let's go on over to Mumbo and do that, because I feel like at this point, it would just almost be a shame to put it off to the next episode, right? We spent so much time and effort into completing um, this level that we might as well just finish it off, right? Okay, so let's go on over this way. I don't know if they're going to be back. They are back, so we'll take it slow again. I don't want to rush as I get close to the end, just for the sake of it. Uh-oh, it's the jump. But we made it, because we learned from our mistakes. Okay. Let's give it a go. Up we go, transform into a bee. You can pick up some feathers, I guess. Just to have a meaningful stock. Come on. Thank you for all your help, Mumbo. Something interesting about Mumbo in general is that it looks like he's wearing a mask, right? But I wonder what's like actually behind that mask, or is that his head, right? I doubt the design actually goes into, you know, that intense detail or anything, but just an interesting consideration. Those of you that are watching all the way through this level, all the way through this episode, you guys are the real, you guys are the real champs. <laughs> I appreciate your support. It means a lot that you guys would listen to, watch an hour and a half of one of my favorite games of all time that I'm hopefully convincing you is also a wonderful game. It has its own unique challenges, it has its incredible charm, and it has its fun platforming and, and personality does a great job with the whole collectathon aspect in terms of meaningful collectibles that aren't too plentiful to the point that they're suffocating and they're genuinely fun to collect. It's good stuff. So we head on back and we can use our magic. We can fly on up. And here we go. No. <laughs> Come on, B banjo. There we go. Let's chill for a moment. And there's our tenth and I believe final jiggy from Gruntilda's Lair. Uh -huh. Had to do it because, you know, B banjo wasn't going to do it for us. But that should mark the end of all of the jiggies. I think we actually have, yeah, 900 notes. I think we have 31 jiggies on us. But I think that's all 100 jiggies in total. So, we've pretty much completed all of the collectibles. At this point, we just need to have our final showdown with Gruntilda, which is going to be a very fun experience, so I hope you guys are looking forward to it just as much as I am. But, until the next episode, this has been Midnight Zero, and this mission is complete. <laughs>